The COVID-19 pandemic has devastated the live music industry. We're working hard to help musicians, artists, and production personnel, really anyone in the, in the arts who needs it, by donating 50% of the proceeds from this show to go to that cause. Please consider giving. No amount is too small. Thank you for your support. I think it's good to be diverse. It's good to be versatile as a creative person. But as an artist, you know, you gotta have an identity. You gotta have a lane. And so that, that for me was kind of, that was a struggle. And while having all these experiences, I was kind of falling away from, from that. Hi, I'm JP Castillo, and this is my story. As far as I can remember, I've just always been involved with music, in music, surrounded by music. Okay, we're from Costa Rica, and my dad was the drummer for um, a couple of really well-known groups out there, like pop groups from like the 80s, and my mom was a singer. Through the whole circle of being, you know, in music out there, they met, that's how they met, and I came about. Growing up, um, for me, there was always jazz, salsa music, I mean, you name it, pop music, everything was there. Uh, my, my grandpa, my dad's father, he was uh, in the Costa Rican National Symphony. And then my uncle, my dad's brother, is currently the concertmaster for the Costa Rican National Symphony. 
And so I've just had a whole array of, of different genres and styles of music. I kind of just always took it for granted to have music around me, but thinking back, it was just always in me. It was obvious. I mean, I would set up my, my grandma's pots and like books and different things to create different sounds and stuff. And I remember setting up like little drum sets that way and, and using her spoons, you know, the big like wooden spoons from the kitchen. My dad was the director of all the music stuff at church and I naturally just fell into it. My family, even though we were very musical and, and all that, it was more taken as a profession and it, was, it wasn't so much like constantly singing and constantly putting me on the spot and, and you know, you see those home videos of families doing those things. We weren't like that. Like it wasn't like, oh yeah, we sing and dance all the time and we, we play music together. It was more like this is our business or this is like our craft. We love it and everything, we talk about it, but it's not, it wasn't really something that was known amongst us that way. And so my own family didn't even know I, I could sing, you know? And so one time I just decided to do it at church and it was kind of a surprise to everybody. But I continued being a, a drummer in church and that led me to discover percussion, Latin percussion, congas, timbales, you know, just that whole world. And I fell in love with that. Um, I really took a, took a liking to it, started studying it and um, that was about the age of 14 when I started picking that up. Growing up, I, I, like my main passion was soccer. Like I wanted to play soccer so bad. And when we came out from Costa Rica, we moved to LA. I was a little guy, like I was so small, you know, and I'm still small, but being a nine year old, you know, small Costa Rican kid, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the place for me to be with these like big dudes and really, really doing it. and and. I kind of pursued it for a while. I loved playing, but I soon realized that it wasn't it wasn't my calling. It, it, music music was where where I was really you know thriving as I got older and as I realized what, where my passions really lied. And so yeah, church was a big part of, of that for me. I, I got to record a lot of albums for people for different worship ministers and um, different organizations and stuff like that. So I, I got a lot of experience there in the studio and at least at that level, you know. So that was um, a good learning process for me. I got to see my dad doing, working a lot in the studio and just kind of ga gaining a, a foundation of what that is.
hace falta como me la silla bien lento Frecuencia, parece como lo vacía con consistencia Y yo, yo soy de tu preferencia Y aunque te lo siento, tú sabes que es tu presencia Ya que no valorice tu amor Te conozco bien y más de lo que te conoces tú misma Sigo siendo el egoísta de él Que siempre tú esperas lo peor Ándale, compárame con él Hello, I'm John Garcia, owner of Diversity Wireless Partners. We are located at the corner of Durfee Avenue and Peck Road in the city of South El Monte, California. We, along with AT&T, are here to serve our community's wireless, broadband, and TV needs. We invite you to come in, get to know us, and see what we have to offer. We have some great promotions and great selections of phones, tablets, and services to choose from. At AT&T, we look forward to meeting you and providing you with excellent service. Thank you. Then that led me to continue to develop my, my singing, entered into um, my senior year, and there was a, like a big high school talent show. I sang a song by Brian McKnight, and that was my first time really performing in front of a large audience. It, I was nervous, but I really, really like enjoyed the experience, and um, I ended up getting first place for, the, for, for singing. Then I went into college, and I was a drums and percussion major. Still didn't have the kind of like the drive or the passion for, for singing that way. I was still kind of identifying as a drummer. So yeah, so then I, I won first place for singing in the talent show and that was just kind of confirmation that, that that's what I was supposed to be doing. So after high school, I decided to pursue music in college. I went to Fullerton College and um, they had a, a really popular music program. It was, it was like a strong music program with, with transfer to Berkeley and all this stuff. I wasn't the most academic kid, you know? I was very distracted with music and just kind of having fun as a kid. And I, I, I didn't have all my academic courses in line how I should have. So I went to the City College and they actually had a great music program as well. They had a group called the Cabana Boys and um, they had previously been like nominated for Grammys and stuff like that. So I was excited to be a part of that. Second semester, there was a school concert. We were doing Tower of Power, Earth, Wind & Fire music, and this Latin section of, of the show. We were gonna go to one of the other departments and recruit a singer, but I was like, no, I'll do it. Let me, let me, let me give it a shot. So I went ahead and did it, and that was, um, that was pretty much the, the turning point for me. I, I got to perform at this concert, I got to feel that energy with the, with the crowd, with the audience. I, I performed these songs and, and got to sing. And it was my real, real first time really interacting because it was more of a show, um, kind of like a mini concert. And um, I was the lead singer for that. And I really got to experience what it's like to, to, to be an artist, to sing, you know, to kind of deliver a song to somebody and to feel that energy back and forth. And that exchange was, I got hooked from there on and 
not a lot of time passed after that, and I, I changed my major from, from percussion to, to voice. So I started taking voice classes and, and just really, really digging into my, my singing and songwriting and everything that, that was more geared towards being an artist. While I was still in college, I got a chance to perform for Disney. That, that was my first real professional gig, you know, kind of a real job into the enter entertainment industry. I had a friend who was out to, he was more of a, of a theater major, and he wanted to go audition, like a live, live production of High School Musical. And so I, I just tagged along. I just wanted to go check it out, see, see how these auditions are. Never have auditioned for anything like that in my life. So I just went along, no intention of doing anything. I, I was wearing like a white beater, like a, a tank top and some like whatever jeans. That's how I showed up. No resume, no picture, nothing. He convinces me to just audition since I'm there. He was like, dude, just go for it, man. And I was like, all right, whatever, I'm here. I've always kind of had that like, just go for it kind of attitude. Like, what is there to lose kind of thing. Turns out I ended up getting the, the gig. Um, they called me a few weeks after the audition process and they, they told me they wanted me for the, for the part. It was a blessing because I, I got to really like surround myself with professionals. I was working with other performers that, that had been in broad, on Broadway and TV shows and just have a lot of experience, you know, in, in a world where I don't have experience. Acting and theater and stuff like that. And so I, I absorbed so much, learned so much, trial by fire. It was, it was just the whole act like you've been there before thing, you know. So while working for Disney, I, I also got an opportunity to go to Japan and work on, on different productions out there and do different kinds of stuff. And I ended up being there for a year in Osaka, Japan, which was an amazing opportunity. A lot of my development as a singer was partly due to that experience because I was surrounded by some incredible singers, you know, people that, that were from all over the world. That time in Japan just kind of kind of wrapped it all up and put an end to, to kind of that chapter of my life of doing theatrical productions and, and, and that whole experience of what that was for me because I was, I was at that point ready to kind of move on with my career. Sé que te vi llamarse mi atención Pero enamorarme no fue mi intención Sé que ambos sentimos la misma sensación Y así no puedo A una persona Que una vez tuve La me No te niego que contigo la paso bien Pero por más que probé te quiero I'm 
todos sentimos la misma sensación hey, Y así no puedo oh, oh. After performing for Disney and being in, involved in so many really cool productions of different things, right? Different styles and, and then also working as a musician in LA with bands, cover bands and a bunch of things like that, writing music for people. I've kind of become a, a hodgepodge of, of, of music, right? I think it's good to be diverse, it's good to be versatile as a, as a creative person, but as an artist, you know, you got to have an identity, you got to have a lane. And so that, that for me was kind of, that was a struggle. While doing all these productions and while having all these experiences, I was kind of falling away from, from that. Not just being a, a versatile musician, a versatile artist, but you know, having, having a sound and having an identity. And so that took a while for me to kind of develop that and zero in on that. In looking for that identity and kind of the development of, of what that was for me, it became a, a challenge, it became an obstacle for me. I basically, there was a lot of doubters and there, was, there were people in the industry, you know, um, record labels and opportunities that, that came and went because of that, like people not seeing the vision that I was seeing. So it was something that I really had to work on, on really making it my clear goal, my clear identity of, of, of who I am as an artist to the point of where I am now. Because I, I, did, I did have a lot of label situations and, and things like that. I found myself in a, in a place where not everybody was seeing the vision the way I was. It was something that I had to deal with for a while before I kind of got to a place of being comfortable in my own skin, realizing who I really am, knowing who I am artistically, and pushing forward with that. I um, decided to kind of really take a step back, look at my career, look at my, you know myself at that point, and, and really make decisions not based on um, opportunities that were coming, but more based on what I actually want to do, you know, what, what do I want to aim for. And I was blessed with, with another um, opportunity to do a, a Michael Jackson production that was in, in England, and it's called Thriller Live, and I, this was kind of like the story of Michael Jackson through his music, and anybody that knows me knows I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. I mean, I got this bad tattoo, and this is just a dream come true for me to do anything related to Michael in that way. After performing that show, got back home again, and then I get a phone call from a friend of mine, a really good drummer, um, Charles Streeter, and calls me and he's like, hey man, um, I don't know if you're gonna believe me, but the Jacksons are getting back together. This is after Michael Jackson had passed. You know, obviously the tragedy of him passing that hit me really hard. I get this call and he's like, the, the, the brothers are, are getting together. They wanna honor Michael's memory and, and actually going back to Japan to do this big tribute show and then launch a tour. And they're looking for somebody to sing um, that can sing like Michael's parts and that can just be part of what they're doing. And so he told me he was gonna get, pass along my information and to expect a call. I was at, mind you, I was at home, like probably in my pajamas, playing Xbox or something. And I get this phone call, I'm like, hello. And he's like, hi, is this JP? Like, yeah, who, who, who am I speaking to? He's like, hi, this is Jackie Jackson. I got your phone number and uh, we'd like to meet you. And I was like, what? My God, what is my life right now? Who is, are you serious, is Jackie? And from then on, it just been, it's been an amazing, really great relationship with them, working with them, seeing them up close, how they do things. I mean, they're legends, you know, the way that they know their music, the rehearsal process, learning their stuff, getting to, to, getting to play that music with them. I mean, they were there when it was created. They helped create a lot of that stuff. And, 
I mean, they're amazing, you know, and, and so for me it was an amazing opportunity to tour with them and, and, and to still get to work with them. And actually recently I, I got to work with Janet as well on one of her newest singles and um, got to be in the studio with her. And that, that family just means a lot to me. Musically, they've just ins inspired me so much. All these experiences, all these different jobs I've had and opportunities to work with the Jacksons, um, with different people that, that I've worked with, even the Disney stuff. It, it's, all, it's all helped me to kind of like put the puzzle together of, of who I am, you know? I was writing a lot, a lot of music. It just all led me to this place of putting it all together, being JP Castillo now, like who I am, who I've become now. I've been kind of influenced in so many ways by so many different people and so many things that I've been involved in that I've kind of had to strip away some of those influences and some of those thoughts. And as far as being in a, in a record deal previously, I was expected to be something and, and coming to realize that's not what I am, you know, and artistically speaking, you know, musically speaking. And, and so it's just been a lot of just taking, taking what works, leaving what doesn't, and putting it all together.
estoy dispuesto a jugar un juego Solo dime si lo tomas porque si no hasta luego, baby Sometimes when you just bet on yourself and do things the way that your convictions tell you to do them, you get better results. And that's what we've done. That's what, when I say we, I mean me and my team. That's my people, is my brothers, and, and we do life together. And so for me, that's that's been part of that journey and seeing my my most recent music, you know, over a million views on YouTube and and ending up on some really cool playlists on Spotify and messages I get from from people who enjoy my music and things like that those are confirmations and give me the peace of knowing like you did the right thing right before the lockdowns and all this stuff I was touring with Jennifer Lopez she's been a huge blessing for me in allowing me to do that and giving me that that platform to open up for her and she's such an icon you know um, I have a lot of respect for her and her work ethic and, and I've learned a lot from seeing her up close as well just to keep pushing myself forward and not allow the lockdowns and everything that's going on in the world to, to really slow me down. Um, I really believe wholeheartedly in, in not allowing circumstances to dictate, you know, your, your drive and, and your willingness to, to do stuff, to get things done. So for me, it's just been um, a year of just taking it as it comes, but not losing sight of the goal. I was working on, on a project and a, a bunch of stuff I was going to be releasing right before everything shut down, but that really put a, a halt on it. Now I'm kind of just reassessing the way that we're gonna do it, but I'm still, I'm still moving forward, so. No one's gonna believe in you if you don't believe in yourself, you know what I mean? And through my journey and everything I've been through and the things I've experienced, the ups and the downs, one constant thing for me has been just keeping an attitude of, of not being afraid to just go for it. Don't worry too much about what could happen or what, what someone might say. Um, I've tried my best to not be driven by the fear of failure, but more by the willingness to, to succeed. Everybody out there, no matter, no matter what field you're in, it, it don't have to be music, it don't have to be entertainment, but work your butt off and, and don't, let, don't let any fears hold you back. It's like when I auditioned for that initial Disney show, if I was afraid of, I'm just here in a tank top and with my hair all jacked up, then I would have never gotten that gig and who knows what the chain of events of what, how that could have affected my whole career. Just go for it. Who cares, you know what I mean? If you fall flat, just get back up and try it again because then when you succeed, don't forget about the failure. I want to thank Character Media for allowing me to tell my story. Um, thank you so much for, for watching. Thank you for your support. Please follow me at JP Castillo Music throughout all social media platforms. You can listen to my music, watch my videos on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, everywhere. Thanks. Me contaron que te vieron por ahí Con otro hombre que luces más bella Ya me contaron que tú eres feliz Pero qué linda que brilla esa estrella Pero que nadie me pregunte por ti oh. Pero que nadie me pregunte por ella Yo te deseo que seas feliz Aunque por dentro me ahogue la pena Es que duele